everybody. Neil here. Um, life's coming along pretty good. We're making pretty good progress on it. We had to break this up into a two-part video because it was getting a little lengthy. So if you didn't watch the first part, I suggest that you do. And if you did watch the first part, hopefully you enjoyed it and you're here for the second. So without further ado, we're going to get back into that project. I hope you guys enjoy it and all of that fun stuff. If you do, like, share, subscribe. If you haven't already, I would like to thank my supporters and everybody else who watches this video. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And we'll see you at the end. All right. Usually quench outside to keep the smell out of the garage. I went ahead and done another thermo cycle on that blade just because. Got a piece of steel heating up again so I can take it back out to put it in the oil, bring it up to temperature, and then we'll go in for heat treatment. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do is I have a forge off. Just going to set this in here with the last inch or so of the blade hanging out of the forge so that tip doesn't overheat. I'm going to slowly let it catch some heat and then we'll turn the forge back on and go from there. Okay, I've already gone, let the back part of this blade heat up. I have a couple of pieces of angle iron in my vise, just because with a blade this small, I don't want to take any chances. There she is, fresh out of the quench. As you can see, dead straight. I don't know how well you can tell. Edge is still in line because it's not always a guarantee. Especially if you have your bevel started, you clamp it in that angle iron. And I've had it before where you pull it out and where your bevels are because it's thinner, twists one way or something, but your spine stays straight. Now I haven't file tested it yet. I was waiting to do this on camera, but there we go all right so what i'm going to do is just get this cleaned up run it across the 220 which i like to keep worn out belts for that kind of stuff just to knock this scale off because scale is pretty hard on a new belt plus why well, throw the old ones away they still work especially for wood anyway all right so the 220 is already on here and I'm just going to give it a quick clean up There we go, nice and shiny again. That way when I go to temper it, I can see plainly the colors instead of just cleaning off the edge. All right, so what I'm gonna do when I start here, let me get my stir stick to get some of this crud to sink to the bottom. So I'm gonna keep this portion of it underwater while I heat up back here and a little bit of the top because obviously it thins down because especially with something that's only just under an eighth of an inch now. It's only six inches long overall. This can go downhill in a hurry, then you find yourself re-thermocycling and reheat treating all of that stuff. All right, so wipe this off here real quick. There you have it. You can see a little dark here, but it's not a big issue. And then I don't know if you can see the color on the rest of it or not. 
but we got a light straw all the way from here down. All right, so I got a piece of zebra wood. I've cut a piece off at three and a half inches, take it across the bandsaw, rip it in half. That'll give me plenty for the scales. Unfortunately, the blade on that one's thin, so it travels a lot. Because if I had could rip it down this way, I'd actually be able to get four sets of scales out of it. But it is what it is. I look forward to trying this. Evan sent this to me. It's been well over a year ago. And I haven't used any yet. Okay, so I've gone and cut that block down. And then ripped it in half. Run across the planer real quick. Just going to touch it off. An 80 grit to clean it up a bit. We'll get on to drilling holes. I'm not going to use my respirator on this one, just real quick. enough to clean it up so we have our scales I mean this one's still not perfect but you know just to show you a little bit of the process without having to make this video any longer than it may be already so once I find said knife which now for some reason is magnetic picks up all the trash go ahead set these on here drill these two holes through Set my pins to hold those in place, which I'm going to use. Where to go? Eighth inch brass. And I'll bring you back when that process is complete. All right, well, there we have the handle, the pins. Obviously, it's going to need to be shaped. Now, the one issue I have is take the caliper and I have. Another one, too, that's more precise is this pin is eighth inch. It measures eighth inch. An eighth inch drill bit does not. So I had to go to, I think it was 930 seconds. So there's a little bit of travel, which I'm not particularly pleased about. But what we'll do, take these pins off, pull out this handle. There it goes again, as usual. I pick this pin up off the floor one more time. I think I'm going to set this whole thing on fire. And there goes the other one. Okay, I'll give it one more time because I really don't want to set my scales on fire. Anyway, I'll take, put a dab of super glue between the two and get to shaping uh, the way I want on here. In the picture, it's going from here to here. We'll do that, get that shaped up so these match all the way around, get them back on the knife, and then finish the grind and clean them up from there. Okay, so between the oscillating drum sander and my belt sander, we're getting there. These are the two blocks still super glued together. I'll take my pins, put those in here, put the blade on it, and every once in a while I'll check and see where I'm at shape-wise. So the next step would be to get this and pop it apart, and there's a lot of meat down here. So this is where I'll start because more than likely you might leave a chisel indent in there or a screwdriver or whatever it is you're going to use to take it apart. So we'll do that and then we'll get it fitted onto the handle, see where we're at from there, and we should be about ready for glue up. Now I've gone and just broken the corners at a 45 all the way around and even that already just makes it feel 
better. And then I took a knife and put it right in here where the meaty spot was. You can see just the slightest of a dimple. But that's why I did it on a spot where there was a lot of meat and they came apart. So, run these across the belt sander real quick. Alright guys, it's been a couple of days since I've had the chance to work on the knife. Anyway, it's coming along well. It is pinned and epoxy. Gone ahead and put some graphite powder in here. That way it makes that file work jump out. It's still proud of the blade itself, obviously. As you can see. So. Time to uh, get this covered. Get this brought down to match. Some finished hand sanding and stuff on it once that's done and then put an edge on it and then it'll be time to start working on a sheet. Already done, but all right, so I got the handle finished. Quick peek. Anyway, so I have leather, I think it's six and eight ounce or eight and ten, I don't remember. You know, I'll probably go with the lighter stuff because it's not a very big knife. Anyway, what I use, a pair of dividers, a pair of set dividers, this one's for scribing, this one's got a lead in it, scissors, a roller, and all for corners, the wax coated nylon thread and a needle, an antler for burnishing, pencil, sharpie, I usually just use the disposables, some leather dye, conditioner, leather cement, contact cement, whatever you want to use. And uh, my favorite, a fork that I flattened a long time ago for poking my holes. And then I'll take a 64th or maybe 364th drill bit to drill out my holes. That way threading's easier. Who wants to sit here and, you know, struggle with thread and needle all night when you can just easily go right along two minutes on the drill press all right guys so i've got that pattern cut out you just take and fold this over this is going to come down for a belt loop put a notch in here to kind of follow this curve i've also cut out a i do not remember what they call this put this in here in between the two a little bit of space and keep that blade from coming through and cutting your stitching so what we're gonna do is take this get some of the uh, contact cement ready to go put that piece on here put that one we'll tack it in a couple of places and then we'll get to drilling but what we're gonna do first is go over one side of this with it's over there somewhere the fork and the awl to make my lines for the stitching. Sorry, I'm bumbling. I don't know, you know. It's been a while since I've done some leather work. Actually, last time I did any leather work was my sheath. First sheath I had made. Came out pretty good, I thought. Knife wasn't bad, but I really enjoyed the leather work. And I enjoyed doing it, too. It was fun. Anyway... Well, we're going to carry on. See what happens. All right, now, like I said, what I do is the fork here and the awl. Take the fork, and I'm going to leave the bottom half inch, five-eighths, whatever, open. So, drain out water and everything, plus I don't have to worry about stitching it. 
but this is too big without making the curve for that bend. I'm gonna give that a pop. I just won't drill that one out. And then I'll give you your marks. I'll take this one and follow it. Now on the curve, because this isn't curved, I'll usually just set it in here like this. And if you kind of just barely give it any pressure on this veg tan leather, I don't know if you can see that. It will leave the very slightest of indents. And that's where you can take with the awl. You can, even, you can use your hand, really. To try to keep up that curve. That way you don't get that box look. I'm going to continue on. Move on. So here's where we sit now. This one's about ready to have its holes punched and drilled. Now... Usually I'd punch my holes first, but this time I'm going to punch them and then just drill right through all three both sides in the wilt. I remembered what it was called that time. So that's going to be the next step. Get my trusty old fork here. Get started up on the top. Now I don't want to get going. See, that's the problem. Once you... Lay it this way, you can't see, and when you lay it here, you're on your sides. But veg tan isn't really that bad. So even if I were to just go like this, I'm sorry, you guys can't see. So even if I were to just go like this and push, you can see the four indents, and then I can go over it with the awl. Now, if you are going to do that, and even if you have a regular punch, it's good to put your first prong into your last hole. That way your spacing stays proper. And again, you can just give it a push. And do the same thing. This has a very slight curve on it. So I don't have to worry much about it. Now you can see we're slowly making the dimples on our way down. And if something gets out of line... That's what's nice about not stabbing it in there because once you get it wet to start wet molding it, you finish it and stain it and stuff, you won't even know. So this is where we're at. Starting to get pretty late. I was hoping to have this done yesterday actually, but that didn't happen. I was hoping to have it done tonight and I could have if I would have just paid a little more attention on that one. But I didn't, so... Here we are. I just all right. I know it's dark out. It's getting late. My lighting sucks, but I don't have two needles. So what we're gonna do is the single needle stitch, which is just in through the front, next hole in the back. Pull it tight. Next hole through the front. Just keep alternating holes as you go. Not alternating, but you know, when you come through the front, you go into, I'm sorry, I'm not holding it where you can see it. Come through the front, go through to this next hole. Pull it tight, and then in the back, in through the next hole, same thing. Give it a tug. I always like to put my finger here just to keep it from coming loose because sometimes it'll do that. Give it a good tug. Next hole. Put your finger over it. Next hole. Come up again. Same thing. Move this finger here. Come up through. And now... You have the single stitch, the alternating hole. But if you don't have two needles, which I don't, and you want to have that double stitch look, plus for me, it's just more rigidity. Now you do the same thing. You go, you came out the front, so you go back in to the next hole. 
and then same on the back. Just repeat the same process. Give it a good tug. Let me get a couple of these done here real quick for you. Now see, and that'll give you that saddle stitch look. Now see where the single stitch. Now when you start down here, that's why it already looks this way. You don't want to start on the end. You want to come in and work your way backwards and then forwards. That way you can lock in your thread. But see the difference between the single stitch and this gives you that double saddle stitch look. Which isn't hard. I mean, if you want, sit here and watch. Don't take long. Give it a tug in through. And this is why I like to drill mine with the 364 inch drill bit. Because it can get hard to get that needle through it on a regular basis. Let alone when you're going back over using this technique. Oh, look what I did. I heard it come out, too. This is where things get interesting. All right. I got enough thread anyway, so come back to a portion that's still got plenty of wax on it. You want to twist it with the rope. Flatten it with your finger. Now, I had a needle threader with all my leather stuff here. And I found it on the floor about a week ago and put it back. And now it has disappeared again. So, I don't know what the deal is with that. So, back on track. Now what I'm going to do here is come in and across the back. Cut this one off. Now, first thing I'm going to do is lay this over. Now remember, this is wax-covered nylon, so just barely touch it with the lighter. And they'll stick. So, find where you were at, which was here, so I needed to come back in this hole. Didn't stick as well as I wanted it to. Anyway, we'll give that a push to make sure this one I just pulled through came over it come back at it this way underneath that last one I usually go twice which as you pull it that knot will actually sink down into that hole go on focus so you can't see it We'll go through one more time. Give it a tug this way. Same thing. Cut her off, leave about an eighth of an inch or so. I mean, you can pull it up through here, but this way has always worked for me. Melt that wax. And there you have single needle saddle stick. Now she's going to fit tight, and that's kind of the point here, is we're going to wet mold this to fit. There you have it. Now, the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that when you cover this with plastic, plastic wrap, whatever it is you're going to do, that it's tight. Because, you know, you don't want it to. This isn't sharpened yet. That's the only thing I have left to do to it, is actually put that last touch on it to make it a sharp knife. So, wrap this all up in saran wrap. Very good, as well as you can. Get out some lukewarm water. Get that knife in there and just mold it to yourself. Mold it with your fingers and you'll be all set. Anyway, I'm going to go do that. That way it can dry. I can get up in the morning 
diet, put an edge on that knife, and it will finally be done. All right, guys. All right, guys. Next morning, there we have it. She is done. Shrooms across the back. Dad's name on the front. Let's get it out of there so we can take a look at it. Made out of 1095 zebra wood, finished in beeswax with brass pins. It's going to need polished again because I've been handling it quite a bit. There's the firework, which continues all the way around. I'm very pleased with it. It's been close to a year since I've made a knife. And this one came out great. It's beautiful. I might say it's the best one. I've, actually, I know it's the best one I've ever done. I like it. I like it a lot. Little, like a three finger, you know. Just a little something light to carry. You don't need much when you're cutting morels. Ah, uh, six and a half inch overall from tip to the base of the handle here. It's three and a quarter. It's three and a quarter from here to the back. Like I said, six and a half inches overall. It really needs cleaned up again. I've been handling it for well, all morning. But all right, there it is. There's the kniff, all ready to go. Sheathed up and everything. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, Give it a thumbs up, maybe share it, subscribe. Thanks to all my supporters who keep watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Till the next time, I'm out. more time pissing around with his camera than you do anything else. I have this knife done already. Why is it filming? Oh, I am filming. <laughs>